Welcome to this tutorial on intact stability. Tutorial number 530 focuses on healing moments and all the different ways that you can define them. So there are several different ways to define healing moments in GHS. We're going to cover how to find out what your current healing moment is, uh, your wind healing moments, your turn healing moments, and your tank shift healing moments, and a wind specification. But first a disclaimer. This presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction, and I am not a representative of Creative Systems. This is all unofficial training based on my own personal knowledge and experiences. For the official training, you can contact Creative Systems at the contact information at the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend it. So, what is a healing moment? You can create a healing moment. This is something that tries to turn to heal over your vessel. And in GHS, these can be a fixed value, or they can be derived from common regulatory scenarios. And this can even be a constant healing moment, or it can change with the heal angle of your vessel. So the basic GHS command to do this is the HMMT command. And then there are several specifications that follow that. And those specifications are the depend on the type of healing moment that you're going to define. So what are those? Well, first off, you can give it just a straight number. So if you were to do HMMT 52340, that's going to be a healing moment of 52,340 long ton feet, assuming that long ton and feet are your current units. Or if you want to say that it depends upon the wind, you can do HMMT wind, or that it depends on the vessel turning, HMMT turn, or on the free surface moment of your tanks, uh, HMMT tank. And here's a little special one, HMMT star. And that is to make sure that whatever healing moment you have defined with any of those four above, you issue this HMMT star, and that makes sure that it's pushing to the vessel to the side of initial incline. So let's show an example of that. So here I've just defined a simple straight healing moment of 500 long ton feet. All right. Now look at my command history. I've done that. Now I heal my vessel to 15 degrees to start to port. So notice my initial healing moment here is to starboard. Heal my ship over to port. I do my HMMT star command and ask it to report out the value again. And now notice GHS has flipped my healing moment over to the port side. So that's what the HMMT star command does. Uh, as a side note, you can also notice that up here in the right corner, uh, HMMT little symbol is on. That's to let you know that there's a healing moment. Now, I also said the healing moment can vary with your heal angle. So there are three different options that you can add on to the HMMT command to have it vary with angle. So you can add the constant option, uh, which just forces it to be a constant healing moment. It doesn't vary with angle. Uh, the dash C1 option, or excuse me, the C1 option, uh, that creates a cosine curve, so the healing moment will drop off with heal angle by the cosine of the angle, or the C2, and that is the cosine squared curve, which drops off with the cosine squared of the heal angle. So let's look at how that actually shows up. So here's a writing arm curve. Uh, this one, as you can see here, has a constant healing arm. It does not change with the heel angle. Here's an example with the cosine curved function defined, or excuse me, with the cosine function defined. You can see how it drops off with the cosine of the function. And this is a cosine squared curve. So. All three of those are options for your healing moment. Now, as you gather, there's uh, quite a lot of options and ways to define healing moments, and sometimes it's good just to find out what is currently defined. You can issue another command for that, that's the HMMT report. And what that does is it just shows you the current healing moment. Also useful is that if your healing moment was calculated based on wind areas, uh, then it will also show you that calculation from the wind areas. But that's only if that's based on the wind healing moment. 
So here's an example that shows the um, wind or the calculation based upon wind healing moment. And all of this is what gets reported out standard. So you can see here it's telling you the wind speed, drag coefficient, your draft, your lateral plane area, center of pressure, and so from all of that you can get your moment arm. Or excuse me, your healing moment actually. Okay, now let's talk about some of those special scenario driven healing moments. So the first one is the wind healing moment. And this is probably the big one that you'll use the most often. Now, there are two options that I highly recommend you include anytime you use the HMMT wind command. Uh, and that is band and combined. So what this will do is it will calculate the healing moment based upon a wind definition. Now that does mean the wind command has to be defined first. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first I want to tell you about these two options here. Uh, so these two have to, have to happen one after the other and they have to happen in this sequence. So when you issue your HMMT command the band option has to come before the combine option. And what that does is it in, the band option in, will include shadowing effects between different sail components. Okay? And then the combine couples with the oh, pardon me. The uh, band the combine option couples with the band option and combines all of the different wind areas of all your different sail parts into one single area with shadowing. So it's highly recommended that you do that. Now notice I said here that uh, you have to define the wind command first. So let's talk about how you define the wind command. Now GHS is pretty smart. Uh, you type in wind, W-I-N-D, and then your wind speed. Wind speed is in knots. Uh, keep track of this one. Lots of people forget to do the units conversion. Wind speed is in knots. And GHS is pretty darn smart. So it doesn't do just a constant wind speed. Uh, what you're doing there when you specify your wind speed is you're actually specifying the speed at 10 meters above the water plane. And it actually varies that wind speed with wind height. So uh, when you actually do that, it's using this conversion formula right here. So we've got the wind speed in knots times a conversion factor for unit conversions. And this function here that actually varies with height above waterline. Now there's another option for the wind command as well, which is the CD option and that allows you to specify a custom drag coefficient for all of your different structure elements. So that's CD colon and then this is your actual value. <clears throat> Pardon me. So here's an example of an output. Uh, you can see here I specified wind 54 and then I asked it to give me a report of the wind definition. And so if you look here at the speed, you notice wind speed actually does change with height above waterline. Okay, now maybe you don't want that curve. Maybe you want a different curve. You can also just type in the wind pressures yourself directly. So you can do it as a set of com of pairs. You type wind pressure in parentheses, and then it's a set of pairs. So it's a wind pressure at a height, wind pressure at height, wind pressure at height. And that's how that works. Uh, your units are in units of pressure, which are long ton per feet squared, or metric ton per meter squared. <clears throat> so here's an example of how I've defined a wind pressure and it's 0.1 at 5, 0.12 at 10, 0.15 at 20 and then I asked it to give me a report and you can see here yes it does vary with height. Now, this is one thing I want to clarify for people and eliminate any confusion. A lot of people see this in the GHS command dictionary, the wind gust option. Um, it's an option for the healing moment command. 
uh, that is used only for the severe wind and roll criteria. And we'll have more details on that in the next tutorial. The important thing to know is that unless you're doing the severe wind and roll criteria, this gust option does not affect your normal healing moments. So keep that in mind. Okay, now let's turn on to a different type of turn healing moment. Uh, the healing moment churn command. So it's the keyword is churn, then you're specifying the radius of your vessel churn and the speed. And that will create a healing moment from the centrifugal force of the, your current vessel churn. So radius is in your current length units and speed is in knots. You can see down here as an example I've done healing moment churn 50 comma 20. And so my churn radius is 50 feet and my turning speed is 20 dots. <laughs> and it's uh, healing pretty hard. Okay, the last healing moment I want to talk about is the tank shift healing moment. So, what you do with this one is step one, you load all of your tanks to the desired level. And don't worry, GHS calculates the free surface from that tank moment. Then you issue the healing moment tank command. And what that will do is internally GHS will heal your vessel for several different heal angles. It will look at how the liquids shift in your tanks and it will calculate what is the healing moment from that tank shift. So, pretty useful. Ooh. So, just as an example here, you can see I loaded all of my tanks to 0.5, so halfway full. I issued the uh, healing moment tank command. It generates all those healing moments, and then I asked it to report it to me. So you can see here, uh, in this case, the healing moment increases as the uh, vessel heals farther over to starboard. Okay, time for some application. Let's talk about homework number 531. What I would like you to do is create each of the types of healing moments that you saw in this tutorial and generate a healing moment for each, or report for each type then run a writing arm curve for each type going from 0 to 90 degrees. So the t moments that I want you to define uh, a fixed healing moment that is 500 long time feet with a cosine squared function. Then I want you to define a wind healing moment where the wind has a speed of 54 knots. Then next go back and define a wind pressure with these coordinates after all of that's done, define a turning moment. You've got a radius of 500 speed feet and a speed of 20 knots. And then, once all of that's done, uh, take all of your tanks, load them to 50%, and generate a tank healing moment. And for each one of these, remember you're going to generate the healing moment report and run the writing arm curve. Okay, well thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video informative. You can find other videos like this and the homework files online at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.